Today's intro will be a bit shorter. We're just going to zoom in on the capillary system and focus on water movement at this level. We have to remember the vasculature anatomy once again for today. The arterial system branches and decreases its lumen's diameter as we move away from the heart. However, blood doesn't flow at random throughout the body. A group of sphincters can contract and relax based on neural or local feedback loops to dictate the flow of blood. At the level of the capillary, the vascular lumen is a single cell thick. There are different types of capillaries at certain sites like the spleen, the liver, or the kidney to serve a specific function, but overall the main function of the microcirculation is diffusion of molecules, nutrients, or gases. Two forces govern the movement of water at the level of the capillary, oncotic and hydrostatic forces. These forces play a yin and yang game both intravascularly and extravascularly. Simply put, oncotic forces are those exerted by large globular protein. These exert a pulling force on water molecules. Conversely, hydrostatic forces, or those exerted by the fluid itself, are pushing forces. These two dueling forces determine the net flow of fluid through the microcirculatory system. This is best seen on a diagram using the numbers to determine where the net fluid movement will end up. Let's take a capillary or intravascular hydrostatic force of 35 millimeters of mercury and an oncotic force of 30 millimeters of mercury. These two forces oppose each other to leave a net force of 5 millimeters of mercury with the hydrostatic or pushing force dominating. This will be the net filtration pressure for the two intravascular or capillary forces, but we must consider the extravascular forces. There is not likely to be an extravascular oncotic force present in the interstitial tissues except in pathological conditions, but there may be a hydrostatic force present. For our sake, let us say that there is an extravascular hydrostatic force of 2 millimeters of mercury and no extravascular oncotic forces. This pushing force opposes fluid movement from the capillary, which brings the net movement within the system to be three millimeters of mercury of filtration pressure directed from the intravascular space out into the interstitium. This positive filtration means that there will be excess fluid circulating in the interstitial tissues that needs to be returned to the vasculature. This fluid is returned via the lymphatic system. In class, you will discuss this system further, but before, I want you to think about what would happen to a patient who has severe cirrhotic liver disease and loses half of their intravascular oncotic pressure. What direction would that move the fluid? What would happen if this overtook the lymphatic system's ability to return fluid to the vasculature? Think about these pathological conditions and how they may present in a patient. Again, I thank you for watching and good luck with your studies.